there are many histories of art. The Western academic tradition foregrounds classical antiquity, the Renaissance, and masters like Caravaggio, Rembrandt, and Monet. But there are other traditions, populated by those whose names are not so familiar, who are often working in cheap, humble materials, and who might not have considered themselves artists at all. Tate Britain's new exhibition is devoted not to fine art, as you might expect, but to British folk art. It covers everything from shop signs and ships' figureheads to collages by the 19th century tailor, George Smart, and quilts by off-duty soldiers in the Crimean War. Together, these works argue that folk art is not just a neglected part of our art history, but an important record of our social history too. I think folk art has been neglected somewhat because it was never part of the academic tradition. I think the Royal Academy had a strong tradition. Uh, those, those works were, and those artists were appreciated by um, the sort of elite in this country and the museums and the collectors. So it's something that sort of always existed but was never quite appreciated and never brought into the museums. One of the interesting things that in, in a room like this where there's lots of ships figureheads, these would have been made by professional carvers at one point, but over the years they would then have to be repainted because the elements, uh, the salt and the sea, that they would be repainted over and over. So what you end up with is this kind of collective uh, accumulation of, of different ways of working so that what we see now in the gallery today is only the latest version of the way some of these sculptures would have looked. For my purposes, I think contemporary art has become more and more sort of hard to understand, a little bit more theoretical. And I think people are looking away from that and are quite, find it quite refreshing to look at artists who um, come, come from outside of that, amateur artists, untrained artists, and the works that they produce are often very, very bold, and I think that people are quite interested in that. Some of the works in the exhibition are from Compton Verney in Warwickshire, a stately home converted into an art gallery which has the largest collection of British folk art. It acquired the collection in 1993 from Andras Kalman, a Hungarian Jewish immigrant who came to Britain in 1939 and opened art galleries in Manchester and London. He dealt mainly in modern British art, including L.S. Lowry, who was a friend. But he and his wife Dorothy also built up an impressive private collection of British folk art. Their son Andrew now runs Crane Kalman. I think what drew my dad to collect British folk art, partly to do with his uh, background, where he came from, which was a small village in uh, what was uh, Eastern Hungary, Transylvania. And I think it was the art that he saw around him, uh, produced by unprofessional artists, that sort of, when he came over to the UK, drew his uh, attention to it, was the sort of immediacy and the simplicity and the lack of uh, pretentiousness that really caught his eye. Often folk artists are only considered interesting in terms of the influence that they have on fine artists. I was very interested to hear that Alfred Wallace, who was entirely self-taught as a painter, was a fisherman in his former life and he was discovered by the British modernist Ben Nicholson in 1928 when he was painting fishing boats in St Ives. What can you tell us about this painting by Wallace? Well, Wallace spent most of his life uh, on the waters off the coast of Cornwall, so really painted what he saw. Again, as with the 19th century folk art, it's very, uh, it has a narrative, it's about storytelling. So in, in a work like this, you have a boat Entering the harbour, as you can see, the perspective is uh, kind of non-existent. It has its wonderful uh, charm, uh, at least to me, and I think certainly for my mum and dad, there was a charm about these paintings that were really unconventional and unsophisticated, but uh, had a, a warmth and an intimacy that uh, anybody could relate to. Alfred Wallace is one of the few folk artists to be accepted into the mainstream mainly because of his impact on British modernism. Indeed, the Dulwich Picture Gallery in South London is currently staging an exhibition highlighting Wallace's influence on artists like Ben Nicholson. But so-called outsider artists have influenced what we call art for over a century. At a time when the establishment still believed that any art made beyond the West was primitive and inferior, African and Asian sculptures and masks inspired the European modernists. 
Closer to home, Henri Rousseau straddled the divide. A toll collector by profession, the self-taught French painter became a star of post-impressionism. The painter Dora Holtzhandler was born to Polish Jewish refugees in Paris in 1928. She studied at the Académie de la Grande Chaumière in Paris, which refused to teach the academic style of the École des Beaux-Arts. She paints from memory. She draws on folk traditions, as well as artists such as Chagall and Matisse. Though her style has been described as naive or primitive, she is different from the artists in Tate's folk art show. Her works are in national collections and can fetch tens of thousands of pounds. Not so much about influence, like with Chagall, it's similar origins in a way. You can, you can feel uh, a certain... It's more like a similar feeling. I mean, my love was... Oh, don't... Whatever, they don't do the same thing. You have um, this technique which is very noticeable and, and striking where you're not really using any perspective no. at all. Why did you choose to work like that? I, I, I don't suppose I was very good at it, but um, um, before um, Leonardo was it, nobody used perspective. Sure. That's just a, a tr I think it's a sort of a trick really, because we have a surface and, and once you do things like perspective, you're, you're, not, you're not making the picture. I mean, a lot of modern artists think that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And colour is obviously hugely oh, important yeah. for you. Yeah, colour expresses everything. I don't know, I mean, if you get blue, it says something. It's says blue, you know. Why is it important? Different moods, different colours, and every artist has a different palette. People, they tune into what you're trying to say. And um, this is what artists do. It comes, it comes from somewhere. It's not so sort of ego trip, I would like to say that. It's ex expressing one's higher self, and, and people tune into that with art. I once gave a lecture about art being the, a religion, being like a religion. And in a way, it's people say, well, don't believe in religion, but they'll go to an art gallery, and where they tune into with the artist, you see. As an artist like Dora Holtz Handler shows, the worlds of folk and fine art are more and more indistinct. When the Royal Academy opened in 1769, it declared that no needlework, artificial flowers, cut paper, shell work, or any such baubles should be admitted. That seems outdated now, as Grayson Perry's pottery and Tracy Amin's quilts bear witness. Artists are blurring the lines more powerfully than ever.